welcome back to my channel, I'm Meganesium. So today I'm going to be talking about my final year research project as promised in my last video. So don't be disheartened or frustrated if you don't understand everything I say in this video. You're not expected to because it is really, really biomed related. So I was supposed to give an oral presentation on my final year research project, but because of COVID it didn't happen. So we were actually asked to write our script in the footnote section and submit it as a PowerPoint file. But I still want to share with you guys my final year research project because I'm really passionate about it and want to share with you guys what my research is all about. So let's get started. So as you can see from my PowerPoint, the title of my final year research project is TCR gene transfer into non-activated T cells using reach viral vectors for adoptive immunotherapy use. So I'll start off with the aims then introduction, methods, results, discussion, and then conclusion, like any other research paper. So the aim is actually to transfer TCI gene using MSCV-based, which is murine stem cell virus-based beta viral vector into naive CD8 T cells maintained by IL-7 stimulation. So let's move on to the introduction. So before I talk about what ACT is, I would first like to talk about the relationship between cancer and ACT. So cancer, as you all know, is actually a global health problem and traditional chemotherapy and radiotherapy. They have low curative potential and effectiveness, particularly against metastatic solid tumors caused by, for example, HPV, human papilloma virus. So adoptive CD8 T cell therapy, ACT, is actually a novel form of immunotherapy which is promising in treating various cancer types because it actually utilizes the host immune system to attack tumors specifically and is less toxic. So there are actually different types of T cells under ACT, which include TILs, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, antigen expanded T cells, TCRT, which are T cell receptor engineered T cells, and CAR T cells, which are chimeric antigen receptor T cells. But the focus will actually be TCRT for my presentation. So a TCRT is actually a T cell carrying a TCR, which is the T cell receptor specific to the TAA, the tumor associated antigen, where recognition is restricted by MHC. TCRT is generated by genetic engineering, either by viral vectors such as retrovirus, which is the one that I used, and lentivirus, which is the one that my lab partner used, or non-viral systems such as CRISPR, through transfer of TAA specific TCR into autologous CD8 cells in vitro. So some common approaches to generate TCRTs would be expanding those autologous T cells in vitro with CD3, C28 stimulation and IL-2 followed by TCR gene transfer. So a large amount of activated TCRTs would then be reinfused back into the patient. HPV associated cancers, hepatocellular carcinoma, melanoma, epithelial cancers and synovial sarcoma are actually attractive targets for TCRT ACT because of high and consistent expression of specific TAA on tumors and not on healthy tissues. And TCRT ACT has demonstrated success in various cancers, but short persistence remains a challenge. So in order to increase the persistence of TCRTs in vivo and decrease the number of T cells in initial transfer for higher long-term anti-tumor efficacy, we aim to transduce naive non-activated T cells maintained by IL-7 stimulation. So this diagram over here is actually an overview of what my research project is about. So we've used two types of vectors and then we've done transfection, then transduction. So this diagram is actually created using an online website called BioRender. And I do recommend using BioRender to create diagrams for your dissertations or essays or posters because it really creates beautiful diagrams. So yeah, I'll probably do a tutorial on BioRender for future videos if you want me to. You can see I've actually used two types of vectors, the retroviral vector and the envelope vector. So let's talk about the retroviral vector first. So the PMIC E7 TCR actually carries an E7 TCR, which is against HLA-A2 restricted HPV-16 E7-11-19 epitope, whereas the PMIC OT1 carries an OT1 TCR against H2KB restricted chicken or valbumin 257264 epitope. So bear in mind that for this retroviral vectors, they're actually MSCV based. So we use MSCV based retroviral vector instead of MMLV based vector because we wanted to optimize introduction of TCR gene into non-activated, slow dividing, naive mouse or human T cells. So bear in mind that actually for these retroviral vectors, 
they have a GFP insert, which is green fluorescent protein. So whenever this TCR is being expressed, whether in transfection or transduction, you can actually measure it by measuring GFP expression. Envelope vector, it's also called serotyping vector. And again, I've used two types of envelope vector, the PCR echo, which is called mouse ecotropic region virus envelope protein, and the VSVG, which is called vesicular stomatitis virus glycoprotein. So the PCR echo actually is used for infection of mouse T-cells, whereas the VSVG is used for infection of human T-cells. So the PCR echo is ecotropic, while the VSVG is pantropic because it allows infection of cell types from different species. We would actually co-transfect or introduce these two vectors, the regional viral vectors and envelope vector, using one at a time, obviously, into this packaging cell line. So the packaging cell line that I've used was Phoenix EcoCells, which is a second generation gamma region virus packaging cell line derived from 293 T cells. So this packaging cell line allows retrovirus packaging. So the retrovirus now contains PCR specific to the target, which is then harvested and used to transduce CD8 T cells, particularly naive CD8 T cells maintained by IL-7. So why IL-7? Because actually IL-7 it maintains survival and drives proliferation of naive T cells, particularly naive CD8 T cells. So this naive CD8 T cells then express TCR specific to the target. For example, the E7 TCR, which targets HPV16 E7 antigen. So in the future, these naive TCR T cells would then be reinfused into the patients for in vivo expansion through vaccine administration and killing of tumors. Let's move on to the materials and methods section. So for the very first step, we actually did restriction digest. So we digested the PMIC E7 TCR and the PMIC OT1 using restriction enzymes ECOR and HF and BAMH1. So why perform restriction digest, you may ask, because we actually wanted to confirm the presence of E7 TCR or the OT1 TCR within the vectors themselves. Otherwise, the experiment wouldn't actually be valid. So we then actually performed cell culture. So we cultured the packaging cell line Phoenix Eco cells in complete DNA media. And then we performed retrovirus packaging, like I said in the previous slide, by co-transfecting the two vectors, retroviral vectors and the envelope vector into the Phoenix Eco cells. And then we actually measured transfection efficiency after two days or so 48 hours using fluorescence microscope by measuring the GFP expression. So like I said, within the regional viral vector, there was actually a GFP insert used as a reporter gene. So that's why we can measure GFP expression using a fluorescence microscope. So after assessing the transfection efficiency, we then harvested the packaged regional virus after 48 hours, like I said, by collecting the supinating and concentrating by high speed centrifugation for four hours. We then performed titering of the virus using BWLY 2.2 CD8 cells, which is a type of T cell hybridoma generated in our lab. So meanwhile, actually, mouse T cells, mouse CD8 cells, and human T cells cultured under IL-7 condition, they were transduced by adding the package retrovirus, virus, F108 enhancer agent, followed by spin infection involving centrifugation for 60 minutes at 1000 G at room temperature. And then we assessed the transduction efficacy using fluorescence microscope after four days by assessing GFP expression and flow cytometry through staining with different fluorescent antibodies. I'll talk about what antibodies and what markers I've used in subsequent slides. Okay, so let's move on to the results. So these are just pictures of Phoenix Eco cells taken under fluorescence microscope after 48 hours of transfection. So these are just the retroviral vectors, as I've mentioned before, PMIC E7TCR and PMIC OT1. So bear in mind, for these vectors, they have the GFP insert. So when the cells are being transfected, the cells have taken up the retroviral vector. You can see the GFP expression. Whereas for this PBMN703neo, it is an MMLV-based vector. So even if the cells have been transfected, they've taken up the retroviral vector. You can't see the fluorescence because it doesn't have the GFP insert. So what I'm trying to say here is that the more the cell transfection, the more GFP expression you can see, but it doesn't apply to this PVN703neo, okay? And let's move on to the envelope 
factor or serotyping factor. So PCR echo I've mentioned before, POP VSVG is a type of VSVG. PCI VSVG is another type of VSVG, but still VSVG, okay? Really, the whole point of showing you the slide is that cells being transfected with this PCR echo serotype, they seem to have higher transfection efficiency because you can see like more GFP expression, right? And cells transfected with VSVG, whether it be PLP VSVG or PCI VSVG, they seem to have lower transfection efficiency, as you can see, less GFP expression, right? So this graph over here really supports my previous slide. So I've performed a live cell count of the transfected cells, as you can see, because I wanted to confirm VSVG toxicity to the packaging cell line Phoenix Eco cells. So really, as you can see, when cells are being transfected with mutual viruses with PCR echo serotype, they seem to have more live cells, right? So you can see from this bar and this bar over here, more live cells compared to the ones being transfected with the VSVG serotype. So maybe indicating some sort of toxicity of VSVG to the packaging cell line Phoenix eco cells. So let's move on to the next result, which is unrelated to the previous slides, previous results. So because we wanted to determine if IL-7 maintains naive CD8 cells survival. So we isolated mouse CD8 T cells and performed flow cytometry after eight days of IL-7 stimulation. So this is a dot plot, okay, showing mouse data. So these are all mouse cells. So dot plot is frequently used in flow cytometry to present different populations of cells. So you can distinguish different populations of cells. And so, each dot over here is actually a single event, so single cells being detected by the flow cytometry. And we're looking at the markers here, CD44 and CD62L. Obviously, we've also used CD8 marker because these cells are actually gated from CD8. Cells using CD8 marker, so all these cells should be CD8 cells. And CD44 is actually a marker for effective memory cells, and CD62L is a marker for naive T cells, which means that Effective memory cells actually express CD44 and naive T cells, they express CD62L, okay? And really the further up means more expression of CD44 by the cells and the further to the right means more expression of CD62L by the cells. You can actually see from this dot plot, 94.9% .9 of CD8 T cells were CD62L positive, CD44 negative. So indicating they're actually naive T cells. And by the way, this is actually a quadrant gate. So cells here, like I said, are CD62 L positive, CD44 negative. Cells here would be CD44 negative, CD62 L negative. Cells here would be CD44 positive, CD62 L negative. And cells here would be CD44 positive, CD62 L positive. So really 94.9% of CD8 T cells here are naive T cells. That's actually consistent with literatures suggesting possible role of IL-7 in maintaining survival of naive T cells. So here's another graph, okay? So from the previous slide, I've shown that IL-7 maintains survival of naive CD8 T cells. And here, because I wanted to test if IL-7 induces cell proliferation, I performed cell counting for mouse T cells stimulated under IL-7, C3, C28, C3, C28 plus IL-7 or unstimulated control on day 6, day 8 and day 9. Okay, so the number's a bit random actually. I should have planned it better, but oh well anyways. So there are two y-axis, okay, so if they're labelled in blue, look at the right y-axis. If they're labelled in black, look at the left y-axis. See that the number of IL-7 stimulated T-cells, they remain quite steady from day 0 to day 8, okay. So not much proliferation going on here, but there's a surge on day nine. So that suggests cell proliferation. Whereas for C3, C28, C3, C28 plus IL-7 stimulated cells, they had great proliferation, okay? So a huge surge from day zero to day six. But then from day six onwards, you can see that it's actually decreasing. So the number of cells are decreasing. So that suggests suboptimal proliferation or even cell death. So really, it means that expansion of T-cells after IL-7 stimulation suggests a role in proliferation and deprivation of IL-7 leads to defective proliferation. Back again with another dot plot, okay? So we already know that IL-7 maintains survival of naive CD8 T-cells, 
and we know that IL-7 drives proliferation of mouse T cells. So in order to identify if IL-7 induces naive CD8 cell proliferation, we sought to detect expression of KI67 marker, which is a cell proliferation marker on mouse CD8 cells, three days post-stimulation with IL-7. Okay, so these cells here are actually naive cells because we've gated out using CD62L marker and the also CD8 because we've used CD8 marker. So these cells are naive CD8 cells and 4.5% of naive CD8 cells that were actually expressing KI67 marker. So indicating naive CD8 cells were indeed proliferating. So these are actually transduction pictures of IL-7 stimulated mouse T cells and IL-7 stimulated mouse CD8 cells taken under fluorescent microscope four days post-transduction. You can see that there are actually three different retroviral viral system combinations and we've used MSCU-based retroviral viral vector, PMIG E7 TCR and PMIG OT1, serotype with either PCR echo or PLP VSVG. And we've used MSCV-based retroviral viral vectors because of the vector's ability to in fact slow dividing non-activated cells, which we postulated to be naive T cells. So all of them we postulated to be naive T cells, okay? So this, bear in mind that the PMIC E7 TCR and the PMIC OT1, they have the GFP insert. So that's why when cells are being transduced, if they are successfully transduced, you can actually see the GFP expression. So because GFP is actually a reported gene, okay? So the PMIC E7 TCR and T cell echo and the PMIC E7 TCR plus PLP VSVG systems, they were used to transduce mouse T cells while this PMIC OT1 plus PCR echo was used to transduce mouse CD8 T cells after nine days of IL-7 stimulation. The more the GFP expression means, the more transduction has occurred. Really, the entire point of the slide tells you that naive mouse T cells and naive mouse CD8 T cells, they can be transduced. Here is another transduction picture, so this time in humans. So we're looking at transduced IL-7 stimulated T cells in humans. Again, we postulated these cells to be naive T cells, and we've used PMIC E7 TCR plus PLP VSVG retro virus system this time to transduce human T cells two days after IL-7 stimulation. Okay, so again, we're looking for GFP expression. You can't really see very clearly, but there are some sort of transduction going on. There are some sort of GFP expression going on. Here is another dot plot, as you can see. So in order to confirm successful transduction and identify transduction rate in IL-7 stimulated human T cells, we performed flow cytometry to identify transduced human CD8 T cells. So all these cells here are CD8 cells because we've gated out from the CD8 cells. And we're looking at two markers here, the GFP and the MTCR beta. So GFP, like I said, if the cell expresses GFP, that cell has probably been transduced. And why MTCR beta? Because the TCR beta chain of this E7 TCR is actually of mouse origin. So I would say that the MTCR beta is even a better marker compared to the GFP. So if that cell expresses both GFP and MTCR beta, that means that cell definitely has been transduced. So you can see that actually 2% of cells have been transduced. So it's quite a low level of transduction but at least it indicates that retroviral vectors can indeed transduce IL-7 cultured naive human T cells. Move on to the conclusion. IL-7 maintains survival and induces proliferation of naive T cells. MSCV-based retroviral vector carrying TA-specific TCR has the ability to transduce naive T cells. So in the future, we actually hope to perform functional assays to test for TCR recognition of cognitive antigens in vitro as well as do in vivo experiments where we can perhaps implant tumours in mice and infuse TCRTs to see if it can cause tumour regression. These are just the key references that I've used for my dissertation. Obviously, I've used way more references to write my dissertation, but these are the key references. Um, go have a read if you're interested. So that is it for my final year research project. I hope you enjoyed it. Even if you don't completely understand it, that's fine too. I just want you to have a brief idea of what's actually happening in the field of cancer immunotherapy. So feel free to comment down below and email me or DM me if you have any questions related to my final year research project. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. So don't forget to like, share and comment on my videos if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel 
So this is it for today's video. Stay safe and goodbye.